This is the graduation ceremonies of the 64th recruit class of the Greensboro Fire Department. We are very grateful to have the Mayor Perkins with us, Mr. Parrish, Assistant City Manager, Chief Grayson, the command staff, members of the 96th PBIC class that will graduate tomorrow from the police department. We appreciate you coming and the police staff. At this time, we'd like to ask that you please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by engineer Robert Johnson. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say doth that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. You may be seated. Well, 64, today is your day. In just a few minutes, you will no longer be a recruit with the Greensboro Fire Department. You worked very hard. You started March the 1st and you're finishing today. And may I tell everyone out here, this group has just went through the toughest recruit school in the southeastern United States. The Greensboro Fire Department's a class one accredited organization, and we were the first in the United States to obtain that rating. So if anybody could be a Greensboro firefighter, we wouldn't be the Greensboro Fire Department. You're 17 of 700 applicants. So you accomplished much. But you know what? You didn't do it by yourself. Because none of us get where we are by ourselves. Not the fire chief, not the mayor, not the assistant city manager. We all had help from someone. So the, the first group I want to recognize that's helped you is your loved ones. They have been through a long period these last few months and have wondered 
what happened to the person they sent to us on March 1st. So if you're a loved one of one of these folks up front, would you please stand so we could give you a hand uh, of applause? Thank you so much. I'm sure at times you felt like you were doing push-ups. The second group I want to recognize that got you where you are today is right here. And I want to ask the training staff to please stand. And I'd just like to say something about this group of individuals. Individually, their resumes are outstanding. But to put their resumes together is unbelievable. You are looking at the finest training staff I've had the privilege to work with at the Greensboro Fire Department. They have passion, they have concern, and they don't mind getting the job done. Not only did they teach what was required out of the book, but they gave them wisdom. They gave them first-hand information that they needed when they could get there out there on the trucks. Gentlemen, well done. Now, before the mayor comes and shares a few words with you, I've got a few words with you, too. And uh, this story means a lot to me, and I think it parallels with where you're at today. Uh, it deals with a young man wanting to be a Marine. And that's kind of dear to my heart since I am one, Mr. Randleman. <laughs> Little inside joke there. But uh, I heard the story many years ago, and I went on Snoop's to verify it, and it's true. So this, this young man was in high school, and he wanted to be in the Marine Corps. He saw that recruiting poster. He saw them dress blues, and that's who he wanted to be with. Twelve weeks at Paris Island in July, and uh, he was so proud at graduation, right where you're at today. That first day, graduation day, when he got to hear the title Marine, you're getting ready to hear the title Firefighter. Well, after boot camp, he's so proud, so excited, again, right where you are today, he goes to his first duty station. And what he started trying to do was find that individual in the dress blues. Everywhere he looked, he couldn't find him. Over and over and over. Before long, he became disillusioned, even got into depression to the point that he was sent for counseling. Well, they sent, sent him home for a four-day pass, I guess to get his mind right. Well, he was dating this young lady, 18 years old, high school sweethearts, and she could tell right off what the problem was. She said, what is wrong with you? And he told her, he said, I'm looking for the guy in the dress blues. I can't find him anywhere. 18 years old. Now you're talking about wisdom. She looks at the young man and says, you know what? It's not up to the Marine Corps to put the dress blue image in you. It is up to you to put the dress blue image in the Marine Corps. They've done what they're supposed to do. Now you do what you're supposed to do. That's what I'm going to say to you today. We've done what we're supposed to do. Now, you've learned. You've gone through 21 weeks of school and you have learned. Your brains are about to explode. You've earned. You're getting ready to earn that badge. And regardless of whatever happens to you in the future, no one will ever be able to say that you were not a Greensboro firefighter. You have earned it. The last thing I would say is return it. As you go out there now, you are to return and give back to this department and to this city. And don't be looking for the dress blues. Become the ISO Class 1 accredited person that this department needs to continue to have to keep our reputation as high as it is. 
So with that said, and before I introduce Mr. Uh, Perkins, I'd like to say I, I told a little fib. I didn't go to Snoop's. I didn't have to. Because that smart young lady is sitting right over there. And I've been married to her for 35 years. Well, we have another member with us today of the 64th recruit class. We have Mayor Robbie Perkins with us, and he came out and PT'd with you. He's a hands-on mayor. He's always involved, and we appreciate his support. So, Mayor, would you please come share a few words? You know, thank you, Chief, and it is a privilege for me to be here today with all of you. Uh, Greensboro has, in my opinion, the best fire department in the United States, bar none. And it's been that way for a long time. I've been on our city council since 1993 and have had a lot of interaction with a lot of firefighters. And it's one of those things that you recognize the way they conduct themselves, the professional demeanor that they have, the willingness to always go the extra mile to serve our citizens. And that heritage has been carried forward, and you're going to be a part of that. Now, I know you guys a little bit, because when you sweat together, you kind of learn a little bit about folks. Jesse called me. He said, would you come in? And would you work out with our class? You know, you like to run and you like to, to, to work out. I said, sure, I'll do that. I'm an ex-runner. And I used to see groups of, of, of trainees go running around the city. And I'd blow past them, no problem with the running. And, uh, uh, but uh, working out with this group is a little bit different. Because we start with, what, 65 push-ups? 65 push-ups. Now, when you get through about 35 of them, that's about all the mayor's going to get done, you know? <laughs> but then you recognize that planning in this department goes to the nth degree. Because every exercise that we did during that hour was designed to simulate something that you may have to do in a fire situation, in an emergency situation. And I can tell you that it's different than just going to the gym. Because when you're sitting there and you've got your shorts and your shirt on and you're in the middle of exercise and you've got a 40 pound barbell and you're doing this with it eight times and then you're stopping and resting for a little bit and then you're doing it again and you're doing it, I don't know how many times you made us do it, I was just blanked out. That's to simulate knocking a ceiling out in a fire situation. And if you're not in shape, and if you're not ready to do it, and if, you're not, if you don't know the various alternatives that could happen and why you're doing that, then you're risking your own lives, you're risking the lives of those with you, and you're not saving the folks you're trying to save. This is serious business. And you have had the best training that you can possibly get. And, you, and you're part of what I consider the best organization in this state and in this country. We, I've never been anywhere in this city without receiving tremendous praise for our fire department. In about 1987, 88, 89, it's a long time ago, I was sitting with a group about six o'clock in the morning, we had a little Bible study group up in the in what is now the Investors Title Building. We were on the fourth floor, and we looked out and we noticed that the roof of what was then the library was on fire. And so we called in 911, and we put a stopwatch on there. And in about four minutes, three and a half minutes, Greensboro Fire showed up, and that roof was going, and y'all put it out, and thanks to the work that this department did, the Elon Law School's in there today, because otherwise we'd have had a burned down building. So th some things happen for a reason. I'm convinced that, I, that 
that, that, uh, that there's a reason all of you are here. And it's to make our city safer and better. And you're going you're gonna to do your job as a firefighter. But the key to this city going where it needs to go is the type of attitude that you take with you every day. Positive action instead of negative thoughts. Take that with you. Paint. We're going to paint Greensboro because we've got positive action, positive attitude instead of negative thoughts. Take that with you every day. You're going to have a great career. I took my Advil for a couple days after I worked out with you guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all can do the job. And I'm very proud of you, and our city council is very proud of you, and we offer you our heartiest congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was in a meeting with him. We have a big event coming up on September the 7th, uh, Memorial Stair Climb. And he came in yesterday and got us all motivated and excited about the contacts and what he was going to be able to help us with. So we're very excited about that event, and we thank you, sir. And he will sweat with us as we go nine times up the eight stories of the Bellmead parking deck. Uh, our next speaker from City Hall is David Parrish. Uh, his father and I grew up together just a couple of streets over from one another, and I can tell you he comes from a great, great family, and we are privileged to have him as uh, one of our assistant city managers. So, David, thank you. I always like being around the mayor, but he's never an easy act to follow. Uh, his energy is always contagious, though. We appreciate the comments, Mayor. I want to say uh, thank you for letting me be a part of your day and your day as well that are out there. My name is David Parrish, Assistant City Manager. I'm here on behalf of Denise Turner-Roth, our City Manager. She sends her respect and her appreciation for all that you've done, too, and will be doing for us going forward. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, congratulations. I'm not really always very good at reading these notes, but the, I will try to stick to them so I can, so I can respect your time as well. Uh, congratulations on uh, graduates, 64th class, and as the mayor said, uh, what I believe, we all firmly believe, uh, the best fire department in the country. Uh, you, you inherit a great tradition here, and I'm sure that you're going to continue to carry that forward. Uh, I'm thrilled that uh, you're going to commit to serve Greensboro, our greater community. This is an act of service, not only for you, but for your family members here that stood up and your friends that are going to support you throughout your career. So thank you for serving our community in the manner that you are. Uh, I appreciate the dedication and sacrifice that you've demonstrated so far, and also appreciate not getting the invite, as the mayor did. Uh, <laughs> don't be calling me. Uh, <laughs> I'll come observe. I might do a couple runs, but I am probably not as in good a shape as our mayor is, so I appreciate the call for not coming to the training. Uh, but in I, joke, I, I welcome the call. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, maybe with the uh, 101st class, maybe, or something like that. We'll, we'll give me some time to train. Uh, if you realize all that does go into it, the mayor spoke of it, he knows what goes into it now. Uh, as was mentioned, my father uh, was a chaplain for the fire department. So I appreciate all that you're going to do. I have had, still have a lot of friends that are in the fire department. So I know you're in great hands, uh, but I know what, what is required of you. And I know that it is great. And again, it goes beyond you. It goes to the people that are sitting here supporting you. So thank you again for, for serving our community. Um, in addition to me and the mayor, no one else is more thankful than our community too. You are part of something greater than just the greatest fire department in the country, what we believe is a great organization in the city of Greensboro, you're part of a, the community that is Greensboro, and people are counting on you. In many ways, too, you're connected, I think, greater than maybe what else will be said. You're part of the greater quality of life and the economic development that drives this community. People look to you, to our police, when they come and they want to relocate here. It's not all about economics or business or what can we offer. You are part of that total package, and they know what your ranking is. They know what our ranking is, and they trust that our training staff is prepared, the next generation is going to come in, as in you, to continue that forward. So you are a part of something greater. Uh, you're connected to the, to the well-being and the continued success of this community. 
Um, so I appreciate that, but I challenge you with that too. Uh, as you know that you're joining the ranks again as the greatest fire department, I think, in the country. I won its, uh, it's the highest ranking. Uh, as a member of the city manager's staff and on Denise Turner-Roth and with the support of our city council, we pledge to support you in any way that we can uh, going forward and to honor your service. So I'll respect your time and I thank you for letting me be a part of your day. Congratulations and we look forward to working with you over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. There's a few people that we'd like to recognize very quickly before I introduce the chief. Uh, Miss Wanda, where are you at? Wanda Wyatt, she's our administrative guru at the, at the public safety training facility. Not only does she handle fire, she handles police. She affectionately has the nickname of General because without her, the organization I don't think would run. So Wanda, we thank you so much. Captain Oakley, Captain Kennedy, uh, Engineer Robertson, and Mr. Jesse Walker, are you here, right here? Would you please stand? These are the three gentlemen, along with Mr. Robertson's not here, that tortured, I mean, uh, physically put these guys and gal through uh, the physical portion of the training the past 21 weeks. And I'm not going to say anything about age, but two of them's in their 60s and made several of these young folks cry. <laughs> so, as always, we appreciate your commitment, your enthusiasm, and your goal is to be as excited about this department as you are when you're their age. So, thank you so much. We have a quick letter of appreciation or certificate of appreciation we'd like to give out. We did something this class that's never been done. We have a program called Behind the Flames. And that was put on by Captain Haney and Yakima Fox. Many of you were able to go online and watch each week these folks train. So you have a, a good idea of what they went through. But not only did you see it, there was 3,500 hits on this website from 40 different states and from several countries across the world. So this has been a huge success and Yakima hosted this. Where are you? Come on up, we wanna recognize you. They've been seeing you on the web for 21 weeks. We want them to see you up front and personal. And this is Senior Firefighter Yakima Fox and the certificate reads, for your exceptional contribution, talents, unselfish work, and dedication in the launching of the inaugural web video training series titled Behind the Flame, your task as the host proved rewarding and beneficial as a whole to the Greensboro Fire Department and the World Wide Web. This program received more than 3,500 hits, totaling more than 10,500 minutes viewed. Thank you for your support. At this time, it gives me great honor and a privilege to introduce the Chief of the Greensboro Fire Department, Fire Chief Greg Grayson. Good morning. Good morning. This is a, uh, a really a day of pride, and thank you so much for being here and being a part of this program. Congratulations to our recruits, and thank you to the mayor and manager's office and everybody that comes together. I hope that that uh, be my hope that you leave today with a little more pride, a little more appreciation for these young men and women today and all that they've been through in the last 20 plus weeks. Uh, we appreciate you making this a priority to be here today and we certainly want to welcome you and, and as Chief Nick said earlier, 
I want to thank you for all of the loved ones that are here today. Thank you for your support that you've given these, these recruits. Um, that's just begun. Probably the hardest part, one of the hardest parts, but it'll need to continue on. And it's a great show of support to see so many people here today here to support you, care about you, and will continue to do so throughout your career. You've heard a lot about our department. Um, it is, is very much an honor to serve in this fire department. We exist for one reason, and that's to serve people. We are here to serve people and provide service to people who need fire and rescue services. Our mission's pretty simple. We're here to protect life and property. But it's complex in doing that. So the mission's pretty simple, protecting life and property, but it takes a lot to do it. You've heard the mayor, uh, as well as Mr. Parrish, talk about our department's ratings. And, and we are a, uh, an accredited class one department. Um, when you look at all the numbers in demonstrated performance, we're in the top 5%. It's actually even lower than that in fire departments across the entire country. But regardless of any kind of ratings or credentials or numbers that we have, the true test comes when somebody's life is on the line, somebody's property is on the line, and they call and they need help. And that we respond and we come to their aid and we do what we're supposed to do. Uh, and we know our job, we know it well, we perform it well. That's the real test. And I hope that in the last 20 weeks you are, are better prepared to, to be ready for that real test. I think uh, Mr. Oakley, Mr. Walker, as uh, you mentioned earlier, um, have been with the department many, many years. They'll tell you that that test is a new test each and every day. And they always can improve and always can continue to learn. But by performing well, we maintain public trust. And that is so very important to what we do. Um, the mayor mentioned how, how people look to us. The fire and police departments are so very important to the quality of life of a community. These 17 men and women up here before us today, they have demonstrated a lot of commitment. Um, this has been a tough recruit academy. Every recruit academy is tough. Um, those of us who went through an academy several years ago, it was tough then. But you always remember it through your whole career. You remember this experience. And you'll call back upon it, not just the technical knowledge, but the relationships you make with each other and your, hopefully your inspiration to continue to do well. Folks, these men and women in front of us, they are our future. They are our department's future. When you look at the patch on uh, our folks in uniform today, you'll see 1808. This fire department's been here many, many years. It's been a high-performing department for many, many years. As the mayor alluded, he served on council since 1993. These folks in front of you today are our future. And it's said that success is opportunity beating preparedness. They're going to have opportunities. Uh, any of our folks that have been for, here for a while will say they will have opportunities. They will be challenged. Are they prepared? Our training staff has worked hard to prepare them to become firefighters. Their challenge moving forward is to continue to prepare themselves, continue to improve, continue to be the best firefighters that they can be. Because successful fire departments are made of successful firefighters. Without people, we don't do anything. 87% uh, of our budget is salary and benefits. We are a labor-intensive working fire department meaning that everything we do doesn't happen without people. Everything we do is dependent upon people. Um, earlier this week, I had a chance to, to spend a little bit of time with the, this uh, recruit class, as I always do. I called Chief Gerald and I said, please, please work some time in for me to talk to these folks just a little bit here right before graduation, and he did. And I shared with them several principles that, that are important for our success. These folks are our future. We want them to succeed. Their success will equal the department's success. So I offer to them five things that if they will stay anchored in that in their career, hopefully they will be successful, and I'm, I'm confident that our department will continue to be successful. Number one, safety. Safety is the most important thing we do. Safety to the people we serve, safety to each other. We want everyone going home at the end of their shift. Nothing can be emphasized more than safety. We've had great support, too, this year. 
our mayor, council, manager's office, we're in a process of replacing all of our air packs in the department, the self-contained breathing apparatus. That's a huge step for us, especially in these economic times. We're saying that's a priority. That is, that is a, a critical safety need, and we've had great support in doing that. But not only equipment, but how you behave and how you act. Safety is critical to everything we do. Number two was courtesy. I talked to them that, that they have learned lots of knowledge. Chief uh, Nick said their heads were, were about to bust with information. They've big, been sponges and absorbing so much over a short period of time. People will appreciate the technical knowledge, but I challenge that what most people will remember is how they were treated. How did they feel when they interacted with a Greensboro firefighter? Were they treated with courtesy and respect? Were they treated with dignity? We see folks at the, the worst possible time. They've just been involved in a collision. They're hurt. Their loved one's hurt. They have somebody who, is, who has just had a heart attack or has been injured, or they're watching their possessions of their whole life go up in flames and smoke. We see folks at the worst part of their life many times. But I challenge this group this week, always treat people the way you would want your family treated. You treat the people we serve like you'd like your loved ones here treated, and that's the best rule or, or requirement or standard that I can offer to any of them. We talked about excellent service, not just the basics. We talked about where you can go above and beyond, do so. And stay focused on that mission. We're here to serve people. We're here to protect life and property. We are a service organization. Stay focused on that. Don't lose sight of that. We talked about efficiency. We operate with tax dollars and public money, and we have to try every way we can to be as efficient as we can. We're always looking, how can we improve? How can we do things more efficiently? And at individual level, manager level, executive level, at all places, how can we do things better? How can we be more efficient? And I encourage them to always improve, always challenge themselves. How can I do something better? After every significant call we have, we, we look at what went well, what do we need to change? That's how we improve. Um, they can do that each and every day on every call, be the most minor call response they go on, what went well, what didn't go well, how can we improve? And that's a mindset that, that our department has embraced since the, the 90s and the time we got into the accreditation program. And um, it's something that, that's outstanding about the Greensboro Fire Department. But I challenge these young men and women to be able to do that throughout their entire career. We want them to succeed. And I told them this week um, at the end of the Recruit Academy, uh, the ball's in their court. And we want them to, to succeed, do well, and um, be proud of themselves. They, they need to be proud. They need to be proud today. And in, if they stay in this career and they stay with this department 30 years later, we want to be proud of their career and the things that they've been able to do, things they've been able to help, and people that, that they have been able to help and things they've been able to accomplish. Um, it is in their court. And um, in closing and comments that, that I have today, I want to share with you a, um, a poem I like to use at, at graduations. I used it a couple years ago, and we'll use it again today, though, because I think it's very, very appropriate. Uh, in the sixth grade, I had to memorize this poem, and a few years later, I'm still talking about it. But it has a lot of relevance, and it has relevance to our recruits today because the ball is in their court. Our training staff prepared them. They're in an excellent fire department at an excellent time. They've got the tools to do the job. We want them to be proud of themselves, and we want them to continue to succeed. But the poem I want to share with you is called The Guy in the Glass. It's an old poem. It was written in 1934. My sixth grade teacher was Mrs. Mode, and she made me memorize this, so bear with me. When you get what you want in your struggles for self, and the world makes you king for a day, just go to a mirror and look at yourself and see what that guy has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or spouse or chief whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back at you in the glass. Some people might think you're a straight suit shooting chum and call you a wonderful guy, but the guy in the glass says you're only a bum if you can't look him straight in the eye. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear till the end. You've passed your most dangerous and difficult test 
if the guy in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated that guy in the glass. Keep looking in the glass. Be proud of your accomplishments to this point. Be proud of accomplishments the rest of your career. Thank you and best wishes. It's also my honor to, to present and recognize the Fire Chief's Award for this group. Um, when this group came together, uh, they were 17 different individuals. Today, they are a unified team. My task is to name one individual who needs special recognition today. Uh, this particular uh, recruit had an overall academic average of 96.21 throughout the academy. And those of you that have supported your uh, loved ones know the tests are tough and they're frequent. But 96.21. This recruit comes to us from Chicago. He has a construction background, has a fire science degree, and he's a nationally uh, registered paramedic. Firefighter Osiki, will you please come up and join me on stage? Good morning. I had a great speech planned, but I've been told to keep it short. So if anybody wants to stay after and hear my speech, feel free. <laughs> no, we'll jump right in. We've got three other individual awards we'd like to give out today. And I uh, want to start with the Training Staff Award. The Training Staff Award is a very prestigious award. It's voted on by the training staff. Um, we look at overall leadership, we look at practical performances, we look at just how they are as a leader and how they are as a recruit, their academic performance, and we look at all those things and pile them up together, and I think that each of you have seen there's a plaque in the training center with previous winners' names on it. Those uh, previous winners include people like Captain Hall, uh, Captain Myron Keenan is here today. He's one of those previous winners. But the one thing that's synonym synonymous with all of those winners is if you look at them, they're all leaders. They're all leaders in the fire service. They may be riding the back of the truck. They may be chief officers, but they're all leaders. This is a very prestigious award, so I'll read the award. The officers and firefighters of the Greensboro Fire Department would like to congratulate you for your level of achievement over the past 21 weeks of training. Your overall leadership, practical skills, and academic performance identifies you as an outstanding member of the 64th recruit class. The training staff award is given in recognition of overall performance during a recruit training class. The recipient is selected by the training staff on the basis of outstanding leadership abilities, academic standing, and practical evolution performance. After review, reviewing evaluations throughout your class, your accomplishments come as no surprise. The training staff is pleased to inform you that you've been selected as the recipient of the 64th Recruit Class Training Staff Award. Please accept our best wishes for your continued success and achievement in the Greensboro Fire Department. This year's Training Staff Award recipient is firefighter Eric Simmons.
Our next award is the Recruit Achievement Award. This is a fairly new award. This is very coveted because it's voted on by the 64th recruit class. We as a training staff don't have a vote. The 64th recruit class, they vote on this as someone who is an informal leader, someone that is their go-to person. When they get in trouble, when they, they don't understand what to do, when they don't understand some practical evolution or need help studying, they go to this person and they vote for this. And it's my understanding the vote wasn't very close. So this person was the informal leader of this class. And I'll read the uh, award. This award recognizes your abilities during the Recruit Academy to provide informal leadership to your classmates. It's a true honor to receive this recognition from your peers and speaks volumes to your integrity and your work ethic. On behalf of the training staff and your fellow members of the 64th Recruit class, we'd like to congratulate you as the recipient of the 64th Recruit Achievement Award. Please accept our best wishes for your continued success and achievement in the Greensboro Fire Department. This year's Recruit Achievement Award goes to Firefighter Wesley Johnson. last individual award this morning is the Firefighters Abilities Test Award. This award goes to the person who has the lowest overall average in the Firefighter Abilities Test or Obstacle Course or Combat Challenge. Each of you, before I give this award out, each of you should be recognized for your fitness. I would dare say that every one of you would probably say you're in the best shape of your lives right now. Probably so. I know March 1st, after that first day, I thought, I went to my office, and this is my first class from the very beginning. After I saw that first day, I thought, some of these guys are not going to make it. <laughs> because they ran up the fire, fire tower, five floors, and came down, and I don't know what happened at the top floor, but they looked like they were about to fall out. So. I didn't know if they were going to make it. But yesterday, we had our last day of PT. We went in and everybody took turns. Captain Oakley, Mr. Walker, uh, Captain Kennedy, all took turns with them. And I'm sitting there trying to hang in with them. I couldn't hang in. I was hurting myself. I think we did about 500 push-ups yesterday and I can feel it right here this morning. So I'm probably each of you can feel it too. Um, but you've come a long, long ways. And I want to congratulate each of you for your fitness level right now. Just keep it up. Keep it up. But I'll read the award. This award recognizes the achievements of an individual who had the lowest average time for all firefighter ability tests throughout the academy. That individual started the academy in superb shape and improved upon it throughout the 21 weeks. To receive the firefighter abilities test award for your class, is a great honor that says you stepped up to the challenge far below the time allowed for completing the course with an overall average of two minutes and 57 seconds. On behalf of the training staff and your fellow classmates of the 64th recruit class, we'd like to congratulate you for your level of achievement over the past 21 weeks. Your achievement has earned you the 64th recruit class firefighter abilities test award. We'd like to present this award to Firefighter Mark Oseki.
Now I'd like to introduce Firefighter Justin Parrish, who would like to say a few words on behalf of the 64th recruit class. Morning. How y'all? <laughs> like Chief Church said, I'm Recruit Parish, and I just want to go ahead and apologize in advance for what's about to happen. <clears throat> I just found out on the ride over that I was responsible for the class speech this morning, so I jotted a few things down. First and foremost, we would like to thank the city officials, the Greensboro Fire Department, our training staff, and every one of you for taking part in the 64th graduation. To our family and friends, I am sure you did not know or understand exactly what you were about to go through for the next 21 weeks when Chief Nix applauded your loved ones for being in, top, in the top 20 of over 700 applicants. Thank you for your support and your encouragement. To our fellow firemen, we would like to thank you for making time to come out and show us exactly how much we didn't know. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> we thought we were going to be uplifted and encouraged by you, only to realize that most of you could outdo us in every aspect of our job. You could run further, hit harder, hold longer, and push more than any of us. But we learned to be part of the elite that we would have to set our goals high and continue to push on. And to the men in charge of whipping us into shape, <clears throat> we would like to, well, we really can't tell you what we'd like to do to you. <laughs> <clears throat> so we'll start by, and I probably shouldn't say this either, but uh, you have managed to take some of our dreams and turn them into complete and total nightmares. <clears throat> You've managed to strengthen our vocabulary and the actual meaning of it <clears throat> with phrases such as, Let's take a break. It's not a break at all. <laughs> Let's rest, which meant you were going to sit in an invisible chair in the middle of the room. <laughs> <clears throat> and Captain Jones's favorite, let's lay down until we figure something out harder for you guys to do. <laughs> and Captain Hall's, find a place on the wall. <laughs> <clears throat> and simple words such as up, out, together, own. <laughs> we would also like to thank you for the little sign language lessons such as all together, get loud, wondering eyes. This meant push-ups. <clears throat> you got questions and get happy. And to my 64th Brigade, finally, guys, we've made it. Through the mud, through the rain, up the hills, and lots of pain. Here it is, our graduation day. It's been a long time coming, and some of us have cut it closer than others. But in the end, we've managed to put our heads together and graduate with all our brothers and Miss Brown. <laughs> <clears throat> to my new family, Tim, Naked Sean, Chief, Mags, Gonzo, Angry Ant, Ladies Man, Max the Prime, T. Brown, Christo Ball, Sir Pukes a Lot, <laughs> Bruce Wee, Paul Paul, O oh Sexy, D Money, and E Rock. I wish you all the best from your brother, Pillsbury. <laughs> <clears throat> <I'm not done yet. laughs> Last and certainly not least, we would like to thank all of our sponsors for putting this academy on and holding us together. The Manny Hose brand, Greg and Adam, Band-Aids, Asics Bandage, Crotch Powder, Icy Hot, Tiger Bomb, TK Tape, Vaseline, Muscle Milk, Gatorade, 
and a special, special thanks to the Chiropractic Center for putting our old man back together. <laughs> now, all kidding aside, we would like to thank you all for your dedication to the 64th. We are privileged to be a part of the Greensboro Fire Department and appreciate all the opportunities that lie ahead of us. I am sure that I can say, on behalf of us all, that this experience has taught us many lifelong lessons. We look forward to serving our communities as part of the Greensboro Fire Department. Thank you. Now I would like to present the training staff with our class plaque. If uh, Captain Hutchins, could you come get it, sir? <laughs> he was in charge of all our important classes. <laughs> We are about to begin the pinning ceremony. Class, take your place. Family members who are pinning the firefighter, if you will come up this side, they're in alphabetical order. So if you will come up this side of the stage, they will meet in the middle and you'll pin them there. Please hold all the applause until the end. Derek Boger, pinned by Meredith Boger. Tamika Brown, pinned by Curtis Brown. Gregory Cameron, pinned by Alan Cameron.
Christopher Chippy. Penned by George Chippy. Jacob Colbert, penned by Jessica Tyler. Michael Gates, penned by Stephen Gates. Anthony Goldston, penned by Ethel Goldston. Timothy Gray, penned by Christian Gay. Gray. Wesley Johnson, penned by Jeff Johnson.
Rudy Magdaleno. Pinned by Patricia Gomez. Adam Meredith, pinned by Megan Meredith. Max Newell, pinned by Ginger Newell. Mark Osiki Jr. Pinned by Lindsay Bolin. Justin Parrish, pinned by Amanda Parrish. Ashanti Randleman, pinned by Corey Randleman.
Dylan Shutt. Pinned by Emily Walker. Eric Simmons. Pinned by Daryl Simmons. Ladies and gentlemen, let's recognize all the members of the 64th Recruit Club. Sixty-fourth recruit class, please stand for your oath of office. Use your right hand. I, I pronounce your name in full. Do solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. I do further, I do further solemnly, and sincerely swear, solemnly and sincerely swear that, I will be faithful that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. And to, the and to the constitutional powers, constitutional powers and, authority, and authority, which are, which are or, may be established or may be established for the government thereof, for the government thereof and, that to, and that I will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend, support, maintain, and defend the constitution of said state, constitution of said state not inconsistent with the Constitution, of the, United States. the Constitution of the United States, to the best of my knowledge and ability, so help me God. I do further solemnly swear that I will well and truly execute the duties as a Greensboro firefighter according to the best of my skill and ability and according, to law, and according to law, so help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the newest members of the Greensboro Fire Department. Please join me in congratulating the newest members.
Captain Hall, dismiss the class. 64 at 10. Whew. You're dismissed. This concludes the ceremony. You can leave at your leisure. Thank you.